update on the efficiency rules for motors. Pointed here. So I'm gonna. This is just a top level summary of the things that I'm gonna go over. Um, just so you understand, there's a few things that have actually changed from when I even wrote this. So first of all, when it says SNEM, that used to stand for Small Not Small Electric Motors, which was a Department of Energy designation. Um, and there's a little story behind that because there's a small motor rule which has very specific requirements in the law and so it limited the Department of Energy from actually regulating certain products that were outside of the scope of the small motor rule. And so they actually had, they wanted to regulate those items though, so they couldn't do it calling them small motors, so that's why they called them small, not small electric motors. They've taken a lot of flack for that, so now in the latest um, uh, rule that they came out with, which was the uh, delay of enforcement of the test rule, which we're going to get to in just a minute, um, they actually changed the term from small, not small electric motors, or STEMs, to ESEM, which now stands for Extend Extended Scope Electric Motors. So now that's, a, that's what they're calling them, Extended Scope Electric Motors, except the scope that they're extending is down into fractional, not up into larger. So Extended Scope means smaller horsepower, not bigger. Okay? So what you'll see in the future um, from the Department of Energy and from others is instead of SNEM, you'll see ESEM. Still means the same thing. Small motors that they couldn't previously cover. So the other thing we're going to talk about is the 100 to 250 horsepower. Um, we're going to talk about air over briefly. Um, uh, we're talking about above 500 horsepower. Um, we're also going to talk about what's going on with uh, alignment on different efficiencies. Uh, for what this MEM stands for, medium electric motors, which is the current uh, regulated uh, electric motors. And uh, what's going on with uh, synchronous and inverter only. And then also um, the fact that as we made recommendations here, uh, we were making recommendations with a bunch of other industry organizations. It wasn't just um, uh, the motor manufacturers. It was motor manufacturers plus uh, people like uh, State of California, Investor Owned Utilities, uh, ASAP, NIA, NRDC, and there's some other organizations. The State of New York also signed here too. So first of all, I'm going to talk about medium electric motors. So these are motors that are already regulated by the department and uh, talk about what's actually happening in the new um, rule, the direct final rule that came out. Um, so uh, one thing I did not probably cover here well enough, because I probably, to uh, save space, I took this out. Um, the direct final rule actually um, became official on September 29th. It came out in June, um, and as of September 29th, uh, it basically is becoming Unless the department comes out and says that it's not going to be, it is actually going to become what is the rule, okay? And so that direct final rule, we're talking about that right here. Um, and the first thing that it affects for new efficiency rules is 100 to 250 horsepower. Um, and again, just to, again, a summary here, medium electric motors is one to 500 horsepower. So less than 100 horsepower isn't changing. It stays premium efficient for general purpose motors, not talking about air over at this point. Uh, 100 to 250 horsepower is increasing to what we call within NEMA super premium motors and, and it's similar to the IE4 efficiencies. And I say it's similar because it's not exactly the same. Now let me point down here to the bottom right to this chart. And the reason why it's a little bit different, if you look at the enclosed values here, these enclosed values actually match up almost exactly the same as the IE4 efficiency values but the open if open values do not. And so that's what's different. That's why it's, it's um, you have to be careful to actually refer to them simply as IE4 because the super premium values and the values that the department use have a different enclosed and open value. IE4 does not, it has one value. And that one value is equivalent to the enclosed, not to the open, okay? So there are new open values. The differential in efficiency as far as losses between premium and super premium are the same for open and enclosed. Um, so, so just so you understand, the current premium efficient open efficiencies are also a little bit lower than the enclosed. Okay, and the reason why that is in some cases is because these motors are actually for the open are on a smaller frame size. Okay, so they're on a smaller diameter, so hence we don't get to the same efficiency. Okay, so we're moving up in efficiency. Um, and that is going to be effective as of 
um, June of 2027. Okay, so June of 27. Also, um, again, over 250 to 500 horsepower also stays in premium efficient. Um, as I said, we created the new open drip proof efficiency value, so I covered that um, extensively already. The second thing that's happening here is that there's now um, air over motors are also covered for efficiency. Okay, um, not a big deal in the pumping industry, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, but air over is basically has to meet the same. If you have an air over motor and it's in the same frame size as a regular open drip or or totally enclosed motor, it has to meet the same efficiencies, whether that's premium or super premium. Okay, all the way from one through 500 horsepower. Okay, or I'm sorry, from one to 200. Uh, and 50 horsepower. That's it. From 1 to 250 horsepower. Above 250 horsepower, um, they don't actually uh, have a requirement for air over. So this was actually uh, a mistake here. I apologize. They don't actually, they have not regulated air over above 250 horsepower. Um, but there is this unique situation on air over motors on 20 horsepower and smaller. And on 20 horsepower and smaller, they said is, if you're in a special frame size, meaning a smaller frame size than normal, then we're actually going to have you use the efficiency that's the same as fire pump motors, which is effectively this table 12, 11, which <coughs> kind of aligns to IE2 efficiency levels. Um, the enclosed are basically the same as the IE2 efficiency levels. So that's what's happened. For air over 20 horsepower and smaller, if you are on a smaller frame size, then basically you align with the fire pump motor efficiencies, which are effectively IE2, okay? So this is that detail, and yeah, that's a lot of information. Um, I gave you the summary, but this is the detail. So here are the actual detailed values, okay? And it is saying that you have to be in a down frame, um, frame, and so it even tells you what the standard frame is and then what your down frame would be from that, okay? So. It's very specific, again, in this market, in the pump market, it doesn't matter much, but in the in the air moving market, particularly with uh, commercial condenser fans, this is a very big deal, okay? Also, from 501 to 750 horsepower, there is a new efficiency level that is uh, taking place, and you can see there's just four numbers here. There's only four numbers because the efficiency doesn't change. So at, these are already the efficiency values for a 500 horsepower. Um, and if you go to 550 or 600 or 650 or 700 or 750, it doesn't matter. The efficiency is the same, and these are the values. Okay, so that's uh, that's exactly what's happened. And uh, we've never had efficiencies uh, required over 500 horse, but these are them, and, and that's what applies. Okay. So um, the other thing that's occurred here is that uh, we expect, actually don't just expect, I, I use small, not small here uh, all over in this uh, in this reference, but I talked about the fact that there was this rule that came out in June, and it applies, it's actually gone official now because we got past September 29th, um, and it actually applies in June of, of 2027. There's also a rule currently in OIRA review don't know what OIRA is, but it's a department of the Office of Management and Budget, the OMB, and that department has to review every new rule before it comes out from any part of the government, okay? And there is a rule which is called Extended Scope Electric Motors. That's exactly what it's called, and it is in OIRA review right now, and it's been there for about six weeks. We expect it is actually going to come out either in late November or early December to be issued, okay? Um, we didn't know for sure what extended scope electric motors was until we got the delay of enforcement on the test rule, which came out last week. When that came out, they specifically referred to what was previously small, not small electric motors as extended scope electric motors. So now we know from the department that the direct final rule that's actually under review is for small motors, okay? So we know that based on uh, putting, we were actually able to use the transitive property of Department of Energy naming and uh, came up with what this is, okay? So what does this cover? It, it covers all 56 frame polyphase, so three phase, 56 frame, and it also covers all these other single phase types of motors. and. 
um, that motor coalition that included those people I talked about before, plus uh, NEMA, made recommendations to the Department of Energy for efficiencies for all of these different types of motors, um, from one through at least three horsepower, okay? And so we, we recommended that they not include air over for the extended scope electric motors, but we've been basically told by the department that they're going to regulate um, both air over and open and enclosed motors, okay? So that's our expectation. Our expectation is then that this extended scope electric motors, previously called SNEMS, um, is going to come out with a direct final rule. Um, it's going to come out late November, early December, and it's going to have efficiencies for open and enclosed and air over motors for all of these different technologies through at least three horsepower. So, and so then we expect with when that rule will go final, which will probably be early 24, uh, uh, that they're going to have an implementation date of either very late 27 or early 28. Okay, so, and that's it. My goal was 15 minutes, I came in a little under, but I guess I can answer a few questions. Uh, I did not go over the fact of the delay of enforcement that came out, so I don't know if anybody cares to hear anything about that, but, so the department did issue last week on the test rule, the test rule that actually came out exactly a year ago. So the test rule came out exactly a year ago, so it was supposed to implement after six months. Everybody filed for um, extensions. So because the extensions were all granted, we effectively were gonna have to meet it this October and actually on the 17th, so in exactly two weeks from today. Um, but there were some things that were in there that we knew we could not get completed in a, in a year's time frame. So for example, creating new um, calculation programs that got certified by UL or CSA or Advanced Energy. Um, we knew that wasn't going to be possible, um, and so we we requested a delay of enforcement. And I can't, I don't have a chart on it because <laughs> I turned this in before that came out. Um, but basically, uh, what it says is that we have until um, October of 24 to be uh, to be ready for voluntary representations of efficiency on 500 to 750 horsepower. We have until October of 25 to be ready for all of our um, representations of efficiency on air over. And we have until 26 to be ready on inverter only and synchronous and all of the extended scope electric motors um, for voluntary representations of efficiency. So, which means we have to have basically AEDMs created, um, which are the computer programs and have them certified and to the department um, so that we can put those things on nameplates. Or we have to do a whole bunch of motor testing to be able to verify the efficiencies that we have on the motors that we put on the nameplates. So, uh, that came out last week. Yes? Uh, are these regulations like closing a large gap with like the other non-regulated prototypes? So, can you ask that again? Yeah, so uh, other non regulated motors, like outside of the efficiency classes, that IEC and even put together, there's a big market for non regulated frame types. Um, I was just curious if, like, this is, if you think that market's going to start to close down. Well, so basically, you know, the, the, the Department of Energy has now said that I don't really care. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to create a motor that is not inside, that doesn't have any kind of either IEC or NEMA frame on it, um, then yeah, then I'm not going to regulate it. But basically, they say that anything that's got an IEC or a NEMA frame designation on it, they're saying it's regulated. So, um, I don't know that there's a lot of product out there anymore that's out of scope. You know, with the addition of all of the synchronous motors and inverter only and air over and all that, there's not a lot left that's not in scope. As a matter of fact, one of the big discussions we're having right now is what is the definition of a servo motor? And there are some people saying that effectively servos would be covered in some cases and in other cases not. And so actually there's part of the Motor Coalition, that group of other organizations in NEMA, one of the things we're meeting on is trying to create that definition of servo so that we can give it to the department and better define that so that we can truly exclude those things that are really motion only positioning type products and get those excluded because they shouldn't have an efficiency but make sure we're covering ones where somebody may be trying to call something a servo motor in reality just be trying to get around the efficiency so 
Yeah, that's actually something we're working on right now. If that's kind of what you meant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yes, actually, last Friday I talked almost an entire hour on defining servo motors. So, um, so. And there were folks, actually, there were representatives of the department on that call, so um, primarily from, like, Lawrence Berkeley Labs and Guy House. So, so technical folks. <laughs> trying to write definitions. You're welcome. <laughs>